Snapper are regarded as one of the hardest fish to shoot in our waters, and for good reason. As soon as they notice a diver, they take off at speed, meaning that in most cases you have to catch them by surprise. The easiest way to shoot snapper is to set a burly for them, but if you want a challenge, then stalking them is the way to go. We call this snapper snooping. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Kerry and I make videos about my adventures in and on the water. This video however is going to be a little bit different. It's all the fish you just saw in the intro were all shot without me having to leave the surface. Now I'm going to break this video up into two categories. The first one is fish that have been speared around some sort of burly and the second category is going to be fish that have just been shot purely on the snoop where I've just caught them parked up and resting. So yeah, let's get into it. So as I just said, the first category is going to be fish that have been shot around some sort of burly. And there is less technique required for this, but you do have to have some situational awareness. In this first example, I have a burly set about 50 meters away and it has been a long time since I checked it. I just turned my camera on and was headed over to the burley. There's a ridge that is almost out of the water and I'm using it as cover to peer into the gutter. And in this case, there is a nice snapper. I'm able to get a shot away and the result is a beauty fish for the bag. In this case, I suspect the fish had been on the burley, had a feed and then parked up in the gutter for a rest. As a bonus, I haven't disturbed the burley and I was actually able to take another fish off the burley a few minutes later. The next example is a hard case. Myself and Chase are coming back in from a crayfish dive out on the west coast. I spot a couple of lemonfish, or spotted dogfish as they're sometimes called. I managed to shoot both of them and I'm dealing with them when a snapper turns up. Chase seizes the opportunity and manages to shoot it, primarily because it is distracted trying to get a feed. <laughs> Magic! In this third example, we're out on the west coast again and again diving for crayfish. I just managed to catch one and deposit in the catch bin when I notice a small snapper hanging around. It's curious about me, but every time I move towards it, it moves away. So I feign disinterest and wait till it swims up from behind me. And fish will often feel more comfortable approaching you from behind. So then, as it pulls up alongside me, I reach my arm out with a gun without turning towards it and manage to get a shot into it. And what the video doesn't show here is that I've not turned my body into the fish, I've just reached out to the side to shoot. This one is a hard case. I'm out on the west coast and on another crayfish mission. I've just shot at a mullet and missed it when I see a big snapper. Thinking that it's never going to stick around while I reload the gun, I don't turn my camera off and I actually turn away from the fish and reload my gun. Once it's loaded, I turn back around and you can imagine my surprise when I see the fish swimming directly for me. And it's at that point that I pull the trigger and shoot the thing right in the head. He's a nice fish. He swam up to me. I was lying on the surface. I shot him from the surface. He just swam straight up to me. I got that one. I shot that one from the surface. What have you got? Oh, yeah, that's not bad either. Now, obviously, I didn't get the shot on film as I didn't have time to turn the camera on. 
but I believe the reason that the fish felt comfortable enough to swim up to me was threefold. Firstly, we've been catching crayfish, so there would have been stray crayfish legs hanging around, creating a bit of a burly. Secondly, was my complete disinterest when I saw it. And in fact, when I saw it, I turned away from it. This made the fish feel like I wasn't a threat to it, and I was only there to get crayfish. That made it stick around me, and I'm pretty sure it was just hoping that by sticking around me, it was going to get a nice easy feed the next time I caught a crayfish. Lastly, was the location. This was the isolated west coast of Northland, and it's entirely possible that this fish had never ever even seen a spearfishing before. From here, we're going to move on and we're going to talk about the second category, and that's fish that you find just parked up and resting. These are normally found in gutters with nice ledges next to them. The snapper seem to feel comfortable uh, resting up in these sort of places. And these are fish that you're going to take completely by surprise. Because if they see you, they're going to bolt and you won't see that fish again. When I'm surface snooping, as I call it, I'm looking for a very specific set of conditions. And if I get all these conditions right, I've got a much higher chance of success. The first thing I'm going to look for is the sea state. I want it to be really nice and calm. It could be blowing 40, 50, 60 knots, but as long as the sea's calm underneath, we're going to be good. The fish are going to be in the shallows to rest up. And if there's a whole lot of swell, it's going to push them around too much and they're not going to be able to rest. They may still be in there, but they're just going to be a whole lot more active and they're going to be a lot harder to take by surprise. Secondly, I want good visibility. If you can't see the fish, you can't shoot it. So, yeah, goes without saying, really. And the third one is quiet. The snapper in there parked up and resting. And if there's been a whole lot of boats go over or a whole lot of commotion in the water, it's likely they're going to be disturbed and they've probably moved out into deeper water to rest. So I prefer nice and early in the morning or in the evening when they've just come in to park up for the night. Lastly is the terrain. Shallow ground obviously, but with lots of ledges and gutters that Snapper can park up in. Then it's just a case of swimming slowly over the ledges and checking all the gutters for fish. Now here's a good example of how I surface snoop. I swim along very slowly and quietly, keeping my gun ready. I approach a ledge and peer over, ready to shoot if there is a fish there. In this case, I'm too slow and the little snapper bolts before I can get a shot off. This next one is a great example of getting it right. At first, when I look over the ledge, I don't see anything. But then the weed parts and it reveals two nice snapper. I line one up and just before I shoot I notice a third one. It sees me and takes off so I pull the trigger and shoot the one I'm lined up on just before it bolts as well. Yes. It's not a great shot but I get the fish in the end. Yeah that was nice. Man, I just crept over that ledge, shot this guy from the surface, three nice snappers sitting there. This was the best one. You beauty! And this fish is another one taken from the same area. Unfortunately, I don't get this shot on film as my camera battery was flat. <laughs> yes, finally! <laughs> but it's a nice snapper shot from the surface, basically using exactly the same techniques. Now this next fish is a perfect example of how important it is to be really quiet in the water. I was swimming along this ledge and had just turned the camera on because I was coming up to another ledge that Snapper often park up next to. But before I get there, I look down and see a nice Snapper parked up in the weed right under me. It takes what seems like forever to swing the gun around, but I do manage to get a shot away. And again, not a great shot, but I ended up getting the fish in the end. And if I'd made too much noise, that fish would have spooked before I even got on top of it. So yeah, try and be as quiet as you can. This is another fish that I didn't get the shot on film. 
But I found it parked up in this little basin amongst the weed. And little basins like this are a classic park up spot for snapper. And here's another one that the shot's not on film. It's really hard to get these shots on film because you never know when you're going to come across the snapper. And if I leave my camera rolling all the time, the battery goes flat really quickly, and then my camera's not operational when I need it for possibly later on in the dive when I do have an idea there is going to be some action. But yeah, this one was just chilling out on a ledge, and I came over the ledge and managed to get a shot into it. The last example I have on film is a smaller snapper. Just sitting in the weed, and because it was facing away from me, and I'd been quiet enough, I was able to reach out and shoot it before it noticed me. Now obviously I've shot plenty more snapper from the surface, but it is just so hard to get it on film. As I was just saying, you never know where they're going to be. And you can spend a significant period of time cruising over these ledges and seeing nothing. So yeah, just to sum it all up, you want calm, shallow, undisturbed water with nice ledges and gutters on it. And you want to snoop them really quietly, remembering that early morning and late afternoon is the best time. I really hope this video has been useful and if you've enjoyed it please leave a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. It really helps me out. And if you've got any photos of surface shot snapper that you're going to post on social media, tag me in them. I'd really like to see what you guys are getting out there. But yeah, that's it for this video. I'm going to say thanks for watching and we'll see you in that next one. Cheers!